Hello everyone and welcome to another Skynamic devlog, our fourth devlog in fact. I'm Zachary Rich. And I'm Allison Srebnik. And welcome everybody, welcome. It's It's been quite the while. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize guys. Um, things just kind of get crazy towards the end of the year with holidays and all that kind of stuff and it just... It just gets away from us, but we promise we've been working really hard, and we're uh, about to show you what we've been up to. Heck yeah! So uh, every devlog so far has had a bit of a theme to it, and we feel like the theme of this one should be Kickstarter. What is all yeah. the stuff we've been doing on our Kickstarter? So we've been working really hard, like even though we've been kind of quiet for the past couple of months, it doesn't mean that we haven't been working. Like our entire crew has been working around the clock, we've been... Uh, Spending many a sleepless night getting all of our stuff ready to go because we are trying to get this Kickstarter launched before summer. So sometime in the spring is when we want to launch it. And um, we felt like the best way to just show you guys all the work we've been doing over the past couple months is to just show you the, the mock-up of our Kickstarter page and let you guys take a look at it. Now, we we do preface this. This is a work in progress yes. <laughs> so you're going to see text is not finalized you're going to see artwork that isn't finalized all that kind of thing but you guys have continuously asked you know when's it happening when's it happening when's it happening and we can promise that it is going to be happening in a few months yes can't give you the exact day yet because you know everybody's working really really hard but you gotta always plan for murphy's law and all that jazz so um as of right now, you guys can take a peek for yourself and see what you think. We'll make sure we put a link in the, uh, uh, what is, what is the thing called in YouTube? Oh, in the description. The yeah. Description. <laughs> there we go. Oh my God. I was like the discussion. I was like, no, that's not it. So, so we do have a link. Uh, we're going to have a link in the description. Um, and what this link will take you to is what I'm looking at right now. This is the, uh, the preview of the Kickstarter page. So, um, if you guys have any comments, if you have any concerns, if you have any advice, you guys can post feedback here on the Kickstarter page itself, and we'll get feedback directly from you guys, um, and we'd love to hear from you guys about the page, because we've been working really hard on it. Yeah, the main thing is this. You guys have been with us this entire time. We don't want to keep anything sacred or hidden from you. Exactly. So, except the plot. Sorry. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, so the you know, like every other Kickstarter page, the first thing you're going to see is the title of it and a little subtitle, and then this will be a video. So this is going to be a five- to six-minute animated video, which is what we've been working on for the past two years. <laughs> it's, yes. it's beautiful animation. It's going to look amazing. It's going to impress the hell out of all you guys. So that's what we're working on. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, otherwise, like the moment you come down, we've got our about page, which is going to have this really cool poster. Now this, now this poster is not finalized. It still needs lighting and shading and some color correction. And I think that the tassel from Victor Sword is covering Ami's face, so that's got to be fixed. Um, <laughs> there are multiple things that need to be fixed. Exactly. As we said, work in progress. Work in progress. And you kind of scroll down, get a cool inspirational quote. <laughs> And then, yes, this is something that might surprise a lot of you. Like, we actually have, uh, we're putting a lot of animation into the actual Kickstarter page itself. So we want to talk, uh, first it's just going to be an about section, talking about the show. Um, then as we scroll down, we just can see some cool GIFs from the past GIFs we've animated, just further talking about the show. And then we get to uh, our cool story section, which is where we talk about the story of True Tale and what to expect from the story with these yep. really cool kind of sort of Marvel comic motion things. It's really mm -hmm. sweet. Uh, we're going to change the design of that rock monster, and we are coloring that dragon as well. It's not going to stay black and white. Yep. Um, <laughs> then we come down here to the setting page, which is pretty cool too, just to talk about the world and and uh, what split paw is, and then the general land masses. And we have a really cool little segment here that's from the Kickstarter video we're going to be releasing where True Tale Castle and the village is all being built, and it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And we got the characters. Uh, we got our four main characters, you know, Caleb Melody, Victor Dolly. We got some cool animation here. And then uh, and then it's like, you know what? Uh, there's more characters. Ha <laughs> ha! So we have... A whole lineup of all of our other students and professors and parents and 
all the crazy characters you've got. And of course, these will all be colored and vectored and they'll look really yep. pretty. And Yeah, I've been working on color concepting for a couple of these, figuring out exactly how things are going to work and whatnot. But uh, this kind of will give you a bit of an idea of like what's going on with the show overall. Yeah, we got some cool character quotes. And then we get to our darkness page, which is where we start to talk about uh, the antagonists and also our philosophy when it comes to storytelling, which is there is no black, there is no white, everything is gray. So no one is truly evil, no one is truly good. Uh, heroes have made mistakes and they have flaws, where villains also are trying to do what they think is right. And so this is where we kind of talk a little bit about that theming. And then uh, the why us section. So like, hey, why us? <laughs> and I think that we're also going to have like a cool like little cartoon version of Allison and a cartoon version of myself right next to this. Oh, should, good Lord. It'll be a lot of fun. Because <laughs> that's where we're going to have a cartoon version of Allison and myself um, kind of animated in the Kickstarter video too. And That'll be a treat. We, we might post yeah. some uh, artwork on that here in the next couple weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just kind of talking about, you know, why us? Why should you give us money? Like, wh why are we worth your time? And then that's all we've got so far. Um, but we plan on adding a section in here where we do a breakdown of the budget. How are we spending that money? Um, introducing the voice actors with links to all of their social media. We're going to have um, a section here talking about our process and pipeline and more sections on top of that and of course like this link that we have here in the devlog that's going to be in the description of the video this link will never change so over the next uh, couple weeks and months as we continue working on this kickstarter page as long as you come back to this link you'll always be able to see updates as we update it and replace the artwork with polished beautiful artwork and start replacing all this lorem ipsum text with actual text and <laughs> yes and, yeah, uh, we really want to hear your feedback. One of the biggest feedback things is this. So because we are having these animated images, we want to make sure that the page is loading for you properly. So if it's turning into a thing of where it's not loading for you and you're having issues and that kind of thing, we need to know. And so that we can you know, kind of decide, okay, is this animation too much? And that kind of thing. Yeah, because we, so, we have a lot of animation in here and it, it does take anywhere from like 10 seconds to a minute for all of them to load properly. And we want to know if they're loading for you guys, but also we also want to make sure that even if they're not loading, you can at least still see an image there. Even mm -hmm. if the image isn't actually moving, there's no animation. As long as you can still see an image at the end of the day, that's what we mainly care about. And then if you just wait a little while, suddenly they should start moving and then you'll be rewarded with delicious animation. So let us know if you don't see anything there, like there is no image at all, that's a bad thing. We really want to know if that's the case. Exactly. But all right. Um, so that's it as far as that. Let's go back over to our PowerPoint here. And uh, we just want to talk a little bit more about um, the animation itself. Because uh, we are working really hard on creating really beautiful artwork for the uh, Kickstarter page itself. Allison and I did a lot of research. We looked at a lot of other Kickstarter projects for animations and for film. And all of the really successful ones, the ones that not only reached their goal, but then broke to the second tier and broke into the third tier, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they always had like really beautiful artwork and some really nice GIF animations embedded mm -hmm. in their pages. And we were like, hey... We're an animation studio. We can do that too. <laughs> yep. And so it's just all about animating it. So we, we wanted to have the Kickstarter page look really amazing. Like our goal is for us to release this Kickstarter and then have it show up on the Kickstarter's main page as one of the favorites. And so we're really putting a lot of time and effort and uh, value into getting all this artwork animated and looking really amazing. And I, I guarantee that as we start to finalize these individual animations, because nothing you've seen so far is final, um, we'll probably release them as fun gifts on our social media for you guys to have, because they're really cool. We really like yep. them a lot. They're pretty sweet. 
But yeah, we've worked really hard. Uh, we've done so much research and so, we honestly, we've done so much. We really, really want this Kickstarter to be successful because you guys have been supporting us all this time and why not put in just a little bit more effort in a couple more months so that everything is perfect. <laughs> yeah, if there's one thing that has been consistent about us is that sure, we've been working on it for six years and sometimes we go kind of on months long hiatuses where we don't release anything, but that's because the one thing that we can pride ourselves in is we always place quality over quantity and time. Like we will always take our time and try to release a beautiful, amazing product that is worthy of your fandom. So yeah, um, some other things that uh, is not on that Kickstarter page yet is uh, the rewards. Ooh, I want to talk about this. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> okay, so you guys have been asking. I am sure you've been wondering, but we are absolutely having rewards, and we are going to try our best to make them awesome. So these are basic mock-ups of what's to come. So we've got stickers of our main of our main cast. We have enamel pins, which Zach and I have been working tirelessly with the uh, <laughs> yeah. the company that we are going to be, to be using, so which is called. I want to give them a shout out because they're amazing and they've been so freaking patient with us. Give me one second, Zach. You can talk about the buttons and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, I just so, want to make sure that we give them a shout out because no, I, I'm right there with you. They've been awesome because the enamel pins, the enamel pins are so cool. Um, like this is just the artwork that's going on the enamel pin, but when it's actually printed out on metal and it's colored, they look so amazing. I'm gonna put all of them on my briefcase when I teach my classes. <laughs> yeah, the company is called True Metalworks, True and Metal they Works. are here in California, where I am, oh. and they are amazing. They have literally been doing a back and forth like art things with us making sure that the pins are just right and that we're not messing anything up and that's one of the reasons why we chose to like go with somebody here in the states is for that purpose yeah and of course we will have buttons because what well, kickstarter doesn't and we'll have uh t-shirts and charms uh, basically the charms, we're going to release more information about those later, but we're really excited about the prospect of getting those maybe done in wood. Yeah. Wooden charms. They, yeah. they, they look really cool. We've seen a couple of examples and they're pretty awesome. Yeah. Where the image is sort of like placed on a wooden backing and they would have a front and back and all that. So we're super excited about that. We want to do an art book. Maybe if we reach like a certain high tier, we would get it done in like a hardback copy, which would be amazing. Uh, as of right now, it's looking like it's going to be a digital art book. Wallpapers, of course, will be digital and we will have early access. So this is just kind of the start of, you know, us thinking for our merchandise and all that kind of thing. And there's always that possibility that if we hit like a really high tier that maybe we'll make a plushie and <laughs> we will ask and we will do a poll and ask your opinion of what character you would like a plushie for. And then, of course, if you guys have any uh, advice or suggestions of like other kinds of rewards you'd like to see mm -hmm. on the Kickstarter page or other kinds of merchandise that you'd love to see us release eventually, please let us know. We, yep. we, we have the talent. We can always create it. We just need the idea. Exactly. So anything that you think we should do, you you let us know. I can tell you we will not do figures. So don't mention figures because we won't do those. Plushies would be the the closest you'll get with that. All right. But uh, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's kind of the basis of our merchandise. Yeah, that's pretty much it as far as the main part of the of the, the devlog goes. We just wanted to update you guys on how our Kickstarter is coming along, show you some really cool animation. Next devlog, we're definitely going to show you more animation from the actual Kickstarter video itself. Mm -hmm. So that'll be really cool. Um, but now what we'd like to do is because we have we haven't had a devlog in about five months, we've had a lot of really amazing questions thrown at us, and I wish that we could just spend several hours answering all of them. But... We, we don't have that time. <laughs> in fact, oh. we've got a crew meeting here in, in like a few minutes anyways. <laughs> so what we, uh, what we did is we, we did pick out seven questions. So we got seven questions we like to answer. Uh, and let's start off with what uh, Cool Clay Tony has uh, asked us here. So uh, Cool Clay Tony says, 
I like, um, I, 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 I asked this on your YouTube channel, but it's not possible for him. So this was from our, uh, our Tumblr. So what's wildlife going to be like in the world ruled by anthropomorphic animals? Are you just going to create a brand new ecosystem of creatures from scratch? Or are you going to have normal animals alongside the anthros? In which case, I'd recommend giving the people animals unique race names. So we haven't really thought about giving them race names and going in that direction. But we can say this, and we can also share this, that um, the animals that would technically be considered animals in this world are bugs. And the bugs have sort of animal characteristics. Some of them are dinosaur-based. Some of them are just like straight-up insects. But as you can see, like we've got like a, a sheep sort of character we'll have we have a bull over here uh if that goes to the next page uh it even goes in further into like rabbits and fish and little bird kind of creatures but this is how we are going to tackle the aspect of what do they eat they eat bug meat <laughs> they eat bug meat and right. what do they um like what are their pets and exactly. that kind of thing so it's, so this it's been a lot of fun. a bit of an idea of where uh, the world and the ecosystem of the world sort of exists. And yeah, and a shout out to Faye Roberts and Aaron Frost who have done an amazing job with doing a lot of these designs. I think Nicole Green has put a bunch of work into it as well. Yes, thank you guys. They're amazing. We can't thank you enough. Absolutely. So let's go to the next question here. So uh, Foxy Tail asks, uh, your project is amazing, but I wonder how much money did you spend? That's a good question, Foxy Tail, <laughs> mm -hmm. because uh, we've been doing this for six years. And yep, six come March. Yeah, come March, it'll be our six-year anniversary. We we started April first of two thousand thirteen. Um, so yeah, um, it, it, it takes it takes money to run a uh, an online studio, um, and because we've never really released any merchandise to sell, or we haven't done a Kickstarter until um, uh, the, the next couple of months. We don't really have a source of income, so the money's been all out of pocket. It's been uh, out of my pocket, and it's been out of Allison's pocket. Yes. And um, I'd say that it's, it's cost about anywhere from like 1000 to 1500 a year mm -hmm. um, about, because, you know, we have to run our um, our servers. We have to run our uh, our join.me sessions and sharing sessions and Ventrilo servers and um, we have uh, other costs that come along as well, and yeah, it's just websites, kind of, yeah. DeviantArt, yeah, our website Deviant URLs. So it just kind of adds up, and it, I'd say that it, it sort of adds up to again about a thousand to fifteen hundred a year. Mm -hmm. um, so you know we've been doing it for six years, so it's it's been around like six thousand to seventy five hundred bucks is what we've spent so far. That's yep. okay; it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. I, I, I don't regret it at all. In fact, if it was twice that much, I still would have paid it because <laughs> it's absolutely worth it in the end. Yeah, like that's kind of the main thing you guys have to understand with like this whole Kickstarter and our studio and everything. Yes, we do ask our, our crew to create work for free and all that kind of stuff, but we are paying so that that is even a possibility. Because uh, it's not a possibility unless you do put down some money. And even if, you know, it's not astronomical, it still does cut into our paychecks. Yeah. And then uh, I know we've said it before and we'll say it again, but the Kickstarter that we are about to launch, um, the money that we're asking for in that Kickstarter, none of it goes into my pocket. None of it goes into Allison's pocket. It's all going yep. into our cruise pockets. All yep, of it. That's that's the plan, and that's what we're sticking to. Because Allison and I, like, we're not doing this for money. We, we're just doing it because we have fun telling stories. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. All right, so uh, excellent question there, Foxy Tail. Let's see. Next question uh, from Ruben Rivera. So uh, question, is David Larson still doing the music? Uh, is he the only one who is working on it, or are there more people? And is there a possibility that more people could join to take more music? I really love your work, guys. We, we love your fandom, Ruben. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, David is absolutely still doing our music. He's He's been doing music since Double Rainboom days back in 2012. Oh, please, God, don't mention uh, that. We love, we love David's music. His music will always be our go-to. Um, we also do have uh, Chad Gutierrez, who lives in Australia. He's been doing our sound effects. 
So David's been doing the orchestral score. Chad has been doing the sound effects and the leveling. And um, the, both of them working together is really amazing. So yeah, David is absolutely still doing our music, and we don't see that changing anytime soon. Nope. Um, as far good, as um, <laughs> could more people join to take more music? I mean, right now we're not looking for anyone, but I mean that could always change after the Kickstarter is done and, and we have money and we're making more animation and who knows? Like we're we're always open to that. I would just say. Mm -hmm. Uh, pay attention to our social media, especially our Facebook, which is like our main hub for social media. And if we are looking for more work, we'll definitely notify you guys on social media and let you know. Yep. Yeah. All right, next question. Uh, we've got uh, Ivan Martin. So uh, Caleb, Melody, Doley, and Victor have their respective voice actors. So my question is the following. Which actors would you want as the teachers, the antagonists, and the rest of the students? So mainly most of our voice acting cast is from the anime dubbed and video game uh, communities. Uh, and we adore them. They are ex insanely professional and have been amazing. That being said, uh, when it does come to the teachers, and the antagonists and the other students, we'll do an open call again. Uh, and one of my hopes, and as long as the same thing with our voice director, is that we are able to bring back old voice actors who have worked uh, on Dolly and Victor and have them be teachers. Because one of the reasons why we changed the voice actors for those two characters is they were now young and we needed young sounding characters. So uh, that's kind of the basis for voice acting. As of right now, there's nothing in the works. All of the voice actors uh, for our pilot have already been cast and everything, but if anything changes, we will let you know through social media. Absolutely. We will always let you guys know through social media if we're ever looking for something. All right. Uh, then we have a uh, PokeTuber noob. Uh, I really want to be a supporter of this project. You guys are working, and I hope you and your staff are still not under the weather. Don't worry. We're all feeling fine now. <laughs> oh, finally. Uh, we all, got over it's flow. like a flu just wiped out half of our crew. Oh, it was awful. No, um, it was him. Well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Put it all on me. <laughs> That's what happens when you're surrounded by sick kids all day. True. All right. Um. I have been waiting for the next devlog for quite some time now, and I have a question. Uh, would you have written out the whole story of True Tale on paper before animating it? Did it sound really good to you before presenting it to a network such as Nickelodeon? And how would you feel if this was just for fun and you want people to watch it solely on YouTube? So just three Listen, questions I'm there. the writer! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can tell you right now that one of the most important things when it comes to writing is to always do an outline. So... Zach and I will usually write out an outline. Sometimes I will like grab my notebook because I like writing on paper before I hit the computer because the computer feels too like set in stone. Um, but I will write on paper. I will spitball things with Zach and be like, hey, do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like this? If he agrees, then it immediately goes into writing a script. And Zach can kind of pull up our, our pilot script uh, just so you can kind of see the basis of how I, I go about doing it. Uh, so yeah, like just fly through that really fast so they're not reading it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a script for, oh, uh, what okay. is that? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> many anyway. of you brave ones might try to pause it and look at it. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see how much you guys can get. I'll be impressed. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, so basically once that's been done, then Zach and I will sit down, we'll finesse dialogue and all that kind of stuff, make sure everything's good. But yes, we always, always sit down and talk and write out ideas. I mean, we kind of have planned out three seasons for this show, to be completely honest with you. Yes, we have. <laughs> so, and we've had like knockout, drag out, screaming matches at each other because over the computer. We, I passionately believe that if you, if you, if you believe in something, then you should fight for it. There, you should yeah. never be afraid to argue for something, and we argue a lot. Yes, we do, which in turn makes us have a much stronger relationship and respect one another. And, and I also have realized that with him, because he's extremely stubborn, I have to be very, very particular about what I'm saying. I can't just go, well, I like it. And he's like, that's not a reason. Yeah, why do you like it? You have to convince <laughs> me. Like convince it? me. It's all about debating and arguing and fighting for what you believe in, which is going to make 
the decisions that we make that much better overall. Exactly. Uh, and then as a for pitching to Nickelodeon, absolutely, we thought it was good. Yeah, we thought why it was amazing. We, <laughs> why, yeah. why, would, why would we pitch something that we didn't think was good? Yeah, like, like uh, we, we still love True Tale Prime, but we yeah. do love True Tale The Adventure of School more. We feel like it's more polished, it's better, it has more room for growth. And again, we strongly believe that once all the kids graduate from True Tale and go off into the world to be adventurers, it will become what True Tale Prime was. Exactly. And that being said, I mean, without True Tale Prime in that beginning phase, there wouldn't be a school of heroes. Uh, now, a lot has changed. Like the characters have changed a lot. The the setting, the plot, everything. But you know, sometimes you need that initial sort of spark to take things to the next level. And that's what True Tale Prime did yeah. for us. That's also what Nickelodeon but, did for us too. Like even though Nickelodeon didn't pick it up in the end, we're still incredibly grateful for all of the work they did, critiquing it and giving us okay. ideas on how to improve it and to make it better. And we wouldn't have the True Tale that we love today if it weren't for Nickelodeon turning us down. Yeah, I would definitely say that that's absolutely true. One of the things that... I didn't even know when I was like creating stories and uh, working on just uh, the the second iteration of True Tale when we were doing the School of Heroes. I didn't understand that characters needed to have like I knew the characters had to have flaws, but I didn't know that you know they needed to have like all these like you needed to explain to the person you're pitching to that these are their flaws and these are their motivations and this is how they'll overcome this and all that kind of thing. I just went. We have a cool story. We've got cool characters. We got a cool plot. You should pick us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I was I was a little bit more uh, professional than that, of course. Yeah, <laughs> and I explained things a little bit better. But because they really focused in on the aspect of like, well, what is the motivation? We always said that the motivation. Well, they just want to be heroes. And that's kind of a crappy motivation, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so um, absolutely. Yeah. So that definitely made us rethink the motivations of our characters as well as sort of just the dynamic of how they all interact and their growth. And I mean, my God, the very first iteration of Caleb, he was kind of stupid. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he was, didn't really, he was he blank. Was, like the whole idea behind Caleb and True Tale Prime is that he was the audience relatable character. He was experiencing the world along with the audience. So we tried to keep him sort of naive and blank in a way to where it, a good way of relating it is like the uh the link to the legend of zelda um approach like keep them purposefully uh, as personality lists as possible that way the the person who is experiencing it with them who is immersing themselves in the show they are experiencing the world through that character there's um, just one one giant problem with that concept that was a video game. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we, we had to we had to go back to the drawing board and actually give Caleb more of a personality and more of a of a more uh, fleshed yeah. out backstory and give him like same, flaws yeah, and dreams same and... like make make Victor less you know less annoying, Dolly less you know easily irritated, Melody less just less of a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yes, uh, uh, did it sound really good to us before presenting it to a network such as Nickelodeon? Absolutely. Yes. Do we love it more now? Absolutely. No. Yeah. No. What our new our, our oh. new our new True Tale? Yes. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I thought I thought you meant the old True Tale. I was like, what? No. I was no. like, what the? It's, oh, could have another argument right here. It's... <laughs> I changed my mind. I don't want to be part anymore. But no, we yeah. we've lo we've loved the whole process. Absolutely. And the most important thing, and I, I think we discussed this in our one of our past devlogs, we talked about the studio life and, and all that stuff and bringing people in. We really didn't know what we were doing in the beginning. Yeah. And which also doesn't come down to us not knowing how to manage our crew. It also comes down to we didn't really know exactly what our story was. So things have changed drastically. And uh, we're, we're pretty pleased with it. And yeah. as for the last bit of your question, dealing with like, you know, how do we feel uh, if this was just a YouTube project? Zach and I have always believed that us creating our own show doesn't need the backing of a network. Uh, in the beginning, we did think it needed the backing of a network. It doesn't anymore. 
No. We can do this ourselves. We can make this a YouTube show. We can have fun with it and enjoy the process. Yeah, and, if, this, uh, if this never yeah. made uh, a single cent, like if the only money we ever made was from a Kickstarter in hell, even if the Kickstarter doesn't work, we're still going to make it anyways. It'll just take us a lot longer. Like we're yep. always going to be working on it because at the end of the day, we just have fun telling stories and we're animators and we have fun creating visual narratives through the medium of animation. Exactly. And it really sort of comes down to the whole aspect of anyone can make a show. You just have to get out there and do it. Yeah. You don't need the network's backing to get it done. As long as you, you know the 12 principles of animation, you know how to uh, you know tell a story, um, and you have the software and the equipment for it, there, there's nothing stopping you. The only thing stopping you is yourself. Exactly. Which kind of leads us into our next question. Well, not quite. We're oh, one, we're one oh, question away oh from my, that. <laughs> got it. I knew I was off. All right. So here we have a question from uh, Charles Moss. Uh, so, hey, guys. I'm really enjoying your devlogs. I've been following this show since 2013. And the more I hear about it, the more excited I get about seeing it. Thanks, Charles. We agree. <laughs> For my question, um, you guys mentioned before that the show will push certain elements that most kids' shows wouldn't push and also go into dark areas. Without giving anything away, could you elaborate on what kind of elements you're pushing? Thanks, and I look forward to seeing True Tale. Yeah, so the big one with this one, because this is also sort of a, a writing question as well, is uh, family. So in the beginning, one of the aspects that the True Tale Prime had was it was based around a family sort of dynamic between like all the mercenaries and all that kind of thing. But what we're going to do with this is we're going to do something that is different from most kids' cartoons. You'll see this more in like live action shows and stuff like that. But we're going to focus a lot on family and not just any kind of family. We mean all different kinds of family. Kids who are orphans, kids who have only one parent, kids that have lost both parents, kids who are adopted, kids who don't even know they're adopted. I mean, all sorts of things like that. We're going to really focus in on the child's psychology of living in that kind of environment and how it affects and grows their character into something that is really fun and engaging to watch on the screen. As for the dark elements, you're gonna have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we're gonna have, we've already sort of touched on the idea that there will be, you know, dark fire breathing creatures and maybe a war or two yeah but there will be fighting there will be battles yes. there will be action there will be trauma so yes yeah absolutely there'll, there'll be a there'll be a lot of mature aspects in the show that are going to push it in a direction that you know a lot of people probably aren't gonna think that we would go down that road but we're gonna go down that road absolutely uh, so even though the characters may look cute and cuddly and adorable they ain't babies. Well, that, that's one of the reasons why we chose to go with more of a cute and adorable art style is because mm -hmm. we wanted that dichotomy, the dichotomy of visually it looks like a kid's show, but internally it's for adults. Or well, at least, I wouldn't say it's I not wouldn't for say it's, adults. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely it, not for it, adults. I'd say we're hitting anywhere between 12, 13. I would um, say it has mature. It has maturity. Yeah. That's a better way of phrasing that. Yes. But, uh, yeah, so that kind of covers that one. Absolutely. And then we get to uh, our final question, which was, like, the big, big one, and we just kind of yeah. want to save this one for last. So we have uh, Zap Hill here. Uh, hey, True Tale, I love your work, and I pray that the crowdfunding will be a success. We do too, Zap Hill. <laughs> <laughs> this is a personal question about communication. Since you two are amazing in your relationship for each other and for the project, uh, thank you. Basically, uh, I'm an introvert, and I feel I can't express myself when I talk. Most people did not listen to me when I was in leadership in the past, and I have a low voice, which most people cannot hear when I speak. Overall, it's hard to verbally express myself. I want to express my feelings, but I hate getting into arguments. And the only time I do express myself is when I am angry, which is never a good thing to be in an argument. Even though you're not experts in psychology, do you have tips for improving social skills that you use when you work on True Tale? Also, how do you build relationships, work, personal, etc., when you're used to being alone? 
this one is deep, but you two are friends who like each other's company, and I only had that a little bit in my life. Okay, I'm going to start because Zach has had a completely different experience than me, Mr. Everything I do turns out right for me. <laughs> it, t- it turns not. out right because I'm really good at socializing, but sure, yeah, you go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I can say um, from my past experiences growing up, I – Uh, went to a school where it was only a class of about 53 kids. I stayed there for 13 years. And when I walked out the door 13 year after 13 years, I didn't really have any friends. And then I went off to college and I didn't really have any friends. Um, most of my friends are actually guys like Zach, but, um, but basically I can say that the most important thing when it comes to trying to impress a leadership capability with yourself is you have to have confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. If you have confidence in your project or what you're saying, people are going to listen to you. The reason your voice is low or is quiet or soft is because you psychologically don't believe a hundred percent that what you're saying is worth them listening to. That sounds horrible from a psychological aspect but it's absolutely true. When I was younger, I could never ever talk to people, uh, just my peers at all. But when I had to answer a question in class and I knew exactly what I was saying, or I had to tell a story that I knew precisely all the details and all that aspects, I was on point. And I always could explain myself and my voice was a lot stronger and it was a lot louder and people listened to me. But if I just was like, spitballing around with somebody and just kind of chatting didn't really work out for me i didn't figure it out until it was much older i don't know how old you are zap hill but like i'm 30 and zach is what are you 32 yeah yeah so we've been around the block a bit (laughs) so (laughs) i can i can definitely say that as for your question on improving and becoming a leader and all that kind of stuff I actually have something that I made uh, for a friend of mine from SCAD who uh, reached out and was really confused about how to create his film. And he wasn't sure how to manage people and all of those aspects of things. And truthfully, when it comes to making a studio or doing a project or writing a children's book or doing a comic or any of these things, this will work for you guys. And we'll put a link for it in, in the description. Ah, I got it right that time. Uh-huh. Um, but basically, this goes over all the necessary things on how to make a film, but also how to become a leader for your project. And the three big things, I mean, of course, communication is key. Everybody knows that. But it's quantity, quality, and time. Those are the basis of any project and how you can make your project successful. And if you guys read this, I'd love to hear your feedback, your your comments and all that kind of stuff. It's not that long. It looks long because Zach is like flying through it. But honestly, I've had people who've read it in like 10 minutes it's or less. It's like four pages. It's nothing. But it's like in type 14 font. I mean, like I made it nice and big and, and fun. And it's an extremely easy read. But uh, yeah, when it comes to interacting with people, and I mean, I work with people on a daily basis. Like I actually just started a new job and it can be so intimidating going into a new job and everything's kind of already been set in stone. There's like already the clicks and the family unity and all of that. You feel like you almost feel like you're a transfer student into a new school when you go to a new project. Yeah. I think Allison touched on something really important there and that is uh, exposure. Um, Yes. uh, Learning how to socialize and to express yourself it's the exact same thing as learning how to play a video game or learning how to get good at a sport. You have to expose yourself to it. You have to practice yes. it. You have to keep doing it every day. So if uh, any of you out there feel like you're introverted and you're not really good at talking to other people, then you just have to place yourselves forcefully in situations where you have to talk to people and you have to discuss with people. You'll only get better at it if you do it every day. Yeah, I mean, like Zach, he works with students all day, so he has to be the voice of reason and and talk to kids all day long. 
I work in production where I have to talk to the coordinators, the project manager, the line producer, the directors, the showrunners, all of those things on a daily basis to make sure that everything is being communicated properly. I can tell you this, if you feel that it's too hard for you to talk verbally and you would have an easier time writing it all out, under figure that out about yourself is writing out an email or a text message or whatever, it, does that help you get across your thoughts? You just have to be careful because words can be misinterpreted. Yeah. But um, it's a practice thing. It really is. I wasn't good at this. I didn't join Skynamic until I was like, oh my God, how old was I? 23, 24? Yeah. So, I mean, I was I was not good at it in my younger years. Well, but, actually, same here, too. Like, it, it might not seem like yeah. it, but I actually was pretty introverted for um, most of my elementary school days. And I, I hated it. I hated not being able to talk to people. I was very quiet. I would just, like, go to the library and find a book, and i just read a book, and I wouldn't interact with anybody. But it wasn't until I started getting into middle school where I started to realize that I wanted to change. I wanted to be the center of attention. I wanted to talk with people and, and chat and socialize. In other words, I wanted to be extroverted, even though I wasn't. So for me, there's a saying called fake it till you make it, which mm -hmm. is if you want to be something, if you want to change yourself, pretend that you've already changed and fake it. And eventually, through faking it over many, many months and many, many years, you'll eventually become it. Um, so when I wanted to be extroverted, uh, in middle school, I joined drama classes because I felt like if if there's anything that's going to force me to like start acting, uh, it's going to be drama. So I started taking drama, and then slowly, like through just exposing myself to acting every day and just getting better at, at, at talking with people and being more extroverted and learning how to socialize, I became extroverted. Now I'm a very, very uh, passionately extroverted person, um, and it's just through faking it. Uh, hell. Our studio is a really good example of faking it until you make it. Like, yeah. we've just told everyone that we're a studio, even though we're still we're really not. We're just a, a... We're actually more of like an artist collective. Pretty much. We're a group of artists that chose to call themselves a studio. Mm -hmm. And we're a studio in name only. But that's how you become a real studio. You have to start by calling yourself something, and then you'll become that something. Exactly. And so I highly recommend trying to find people that are somewhat like minded like you and and talk to them, talk to them about whatever. It doesn't really matter whether it's a TV show or anything that you enjoy and they enjoy, too. Yeah. Sometimes it can be hard to find those people. So go go online. My God, I spent most of my time online when I was in in high school. Uh, talking and chatting with people and figuring out how to be heard and be listened to yep. through through text, which Good is old, uh, AOL uh, like chat forum days. Yes, oh, I remember MSN. that. Oh, yeah, that way yeah. back in the day. Hell, I lived on Neopets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, and then of course going off of a like absolutely, we're gonna put a link to this filmmaking one hundred and one in the description. It's only four pages. It's really good advice on just creating a project and communicating with people and, and socializing. If you read this and you're kind of thirsting for more, um, email me. <laughs> I will email Allison. Absolutely. I've also got another link that I'll put in the description for chomp, how to collaborate efficiently, which is uh, my thesis paper for my master's degree that I, I finished back in June of 2017. Um, it's 57 pages. <laughs> it's it's okay, pretty minus crazy. Four, minus four. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm saying read Allison's first. And if you like what you read and you want to read more, absolutely come over to Chomp and read this. It goes over everything, every single little tiny detail of what you need to know in order to collaborate and socialize with a group of people is all in this paper um it, it's insane why don't you tell them what chomp stands for well chomp is very creative chomp is an acronym it stands for the five tenets of collaboration which is communication hierarchy organization morale and participation and then the the paper's broken up really good too like there's an entire section on c is for communication 
all the different things you want to do to communicate better. H is for hierarchy, all the things you want to do to have a better hierarchy, et cetera, et cetera. So it reads very well, even though it is a thesis paper. I didn't write it with that sort of elitist kind of writing where it's, oh, verily unto you, I say. Like, it's it's very down to earth. It's got a lot of jokes in it. It's pretty much all I did is I just recorded myself talking and then I wrote out what I spoke. So it's, it's pretty cool. I think you guys would like it. Um, absolutely read it if you want to learn more about how to collaborate more efficiently and look at a lot of the philosophy and theories about what Allison and I use every day for running Skynamic Studios. And it's some great stuff uh, in here. And there's a lot of really good quotes from other directors and producers from the industry. And it's a pretty cool paper. I'll, I'll put a description, to, uh, a link to it in the description for you guys. Yeah, I can say that um, that my document it's actually something that you can kind of live by. Like, for example, when when I mentioned like the quality, quantity, and time, uh, when it was the new year, I came up with all these New Year's resolutions as like, I'm gonna work on my artwork, I'm gonna work on True Tale, I'm going to like make sure my apartment is always clean every day. Um, I'm going to <laughs> learn Mandarin and all this kind of stuff. I had like this giant list of things I was gonna do. And then I looked at it and I went, oh my God, my quantity is way too high. I can't like have a, devote a lot of quality time to each one of these. And so I had to like nick certain ones and, and break it down. But you can live your life based on those three concepts of yeah. quantity, quality, and time. Yep. And it can kind of revolutionize their way of thinking about yeah. your projects and just your way of living in general. Uh, but yeah, you are always more than welcome to send me a message. Also, if any of you are interested in getting into production out in, in California and in the industry, like I do, I would love to talk to you. I know most of you are artists and you don't want my life, but that's okay. <laughs> I still love you. And I would love to talk to all of you. Yep. Yeah, right. Um, I'm right there with Allison as well. I'm, I'm a professor at the Savannah College of Art and Design. My entire career is talking to artist hopefuls and helping them become successful. So hit me up as well. Yep. So let's go ahead and continue on here. So um, every devlog, we always like to show some of the, the, the cool fan art that has been posted between now and the last devlog. Well, because the last devlog was when we kind of went off of social media for like five months. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we've only had one fan art and we, we, act, uh, we actually literally just posted this um, yesterday. Like Friday? Yeah. yeah. Friday, Friday. 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 So we posted on Friday. Um, so we are bringing Fan Art Friday back. Um, this was uh, fan art done by uh, Florine, which you can uh, check out Florine's stuff at uh, www.deviantart.com forward slash Florine. And uh, it's really cool. We really like it. <laughs> yes. It's cool fan it. art. It's cell shading is really nice too. It's really awesome. Mm -hmm. I like the swirlies and Caleb's so eyes. So cute. Yeah. So if you guys uh, want to draw some fan art or some True Tell stuff, you know, absolutely uh, post it. Um, if you email that fan art over to our truetailmedia at gmail.com, we'll have it. I can't guarantee that we'll post it right away, but we'll add it to our collection of fan art that we keep, and we'll absolutely post it eventually. Yep. Um, otherwise, though, uh, usually this is where we'd say, uh, join our team. We're looking for everybody, but um, we're actually not anymore. <laughs> Allison, you want to take this one? <laughs> so... Um... We know that there are a bunch of you who have turned in tests and all that kind of stuff. And Zach is going to go through them and he's going to, you know, give you your answers and critique and feedback and all that kind of thing. But what we really, 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 really need are background painters. Um, I need Photoshop background painters. That would be awesome. Um, as of right now, I am working on painting our two backgrounds for our Kickstarter. No, our, yeah, for our Kickstarter video um, that we have. And then like all the other backgrounds in, in this uh, exposition uh, area that we have where Caleb sort of tells the story of True Tale. Uh, we are going to do in a different style, but I need Photoshop painters so that when we do to do the Kickstarter and it does launch and hopefully is successful, it would be lovely to already have you guys on standby. Yeah, agreed. So please, 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 please send in your portfolios and all that kind of stuff. 
there is no test. I'm just going to look at your work. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, we, we might hand them like uh, the line art for one of our backgrounds and just say paint this. No, I can I can already tell just from looking at their portfolios. It'll be yeah. fine. All right. Well, that works, too. Yep. Uh, and then, like Allison said, uh, I do apologize. Um, generally speaking, when it comes to answering um, your emails that you guys send in for tests, uh, I'm the one who's usually in charge of that. Um, but because our studio has been on a social media hiatus for the past few months, I haven't been checking that email at all because we just we haven't needed anyone. And I, I do apologize for that. Um, I know how terrifying it can be to send in a test to an employer and not hear back from them. So I feel you. Uh, I really do apologize for that. I will be spending this upcoming week going through all of the emails and all the tests that have been sent out over the past several months, and I will be responding to those and asking if you're even still interested, and I'll go through all of your work, and uh, we'll kind of get this kind of revved up again to, to start getting people to join in. It's just that we haven't really needed anyone. We've had a solid crew of about 35 to 40 crew members that it's just been okay. Like we, we haven't really needed anyone, so we haven't really been yeah. paying much attention to it. Yeah, everybody's been turning in like just phenomenal work, and as you have seen thus far. So, yeah. Uh, but what we we need background painters. We do need background painters, actually. Photoshop badly. background painters. Yes. All right. Um, and then uh, here we are at the end. And like always, at the end of uh, our our devlogs, we we always ask you guys if you have any questions for us. Um, absolutely comment below we'll answer it next video i can't guarantee that we'll answer every question we always try to pick the ones that sort of are asking questions that we haven't answered before and we definitely do pay attention to questions that get like the most likes because whenever we see like 12 likes or something on a question we take that as oh well 12 other people are asking the same question so we kind exactly. of tend to focus on those ones a little bit more so if you guys have a question Look through all, all the comments that are currently on the video and like the ones that you agree with. You'd like that question too, and that'll put that question up there at the top, and we'll see it a little bit easier. Yep, I'm always going through and reading the YouTube and Tumblr and Deviant and basically everything that we have, our Facebook, and cutting out the questions and trying to get them into our devlogs. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, we guarantee that the next devlog will be like probably within the next two months. Within the next two months. So uh, it might be sooner than that. It, it won't be later than that. I guarantee it. And the next one will be going over um, a lot more of the animation that's currently in our Kickstarter video. Yep. yep. So uh, let us know if you've got any questions or if you want to honestly... I'm absolutely fine with you guys just sending an email and going, hey, how are you? How, like, just asking silly questions. That's fine, where too. <laughs> we would, where we wouldn't even put them in the devlog, but you just sort of want to know more about us. I'm so fine with that. Yeah, you go right ahead. Uh, yep. Can't give you plot on True Tale, but we could certainly talk about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> or if you need advice on just how to get into the industry or, you know, what people are looking for and all that kind of thing. I've looked at tons of portfolios and resumes and all that kind of stuff for our crew. I'm happy to help in any way that I possibly can. Yep. Agreed. Well, thanks so much everyone for sticking around for 53 minutes. <laughs> hey, it's been five months. Think it about has. it. 10 minutes for every month we work <laughs> here. All right. And as always, you guys can always head on over to uh, www.skynamicstudios.com to learn more about True Tale and to check out more of our work. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank you.